was under the impression that nobody could break in and steal my cell phone records. As it turns out, I was unfortunately very, very wrong. So now I'm put in a position, which is a very strange position, of fearing my own cell phone. In June of 2005, Adam Music of Atlantic Beach, New York, discovered that someone was stealing the records of every call he had made on his cell phone. Music made the unsettling discovery after he called his cell phone provider, Singular Wireless, with a routine billing question. The customer service rep was, you know, Mr. Yuzik, you can look and get all the information online. I was very adamant with the woman. I said, ma'am, I don't have an online account. She was like, yeah, you do, sir. You opened it up two weeks ago. So then we went through the account. My name is correct. Everything's correct. My social security, you set it up right. We get to an email, which is not my email address. So <laughs> once we got there, I kind of knew that there was, there was a problem. The problem was music was being spied on. His former business partners had hired a private investigator, Gambino Information Services, to uncover information about him. Gambino had little trouble doing so. They were able to break into Yuzik's account at Singular. When Singular discovered the breach, they told Yuzik it could never happen again. But sure enough. They broke in again September 14th, 2005. They broke in again October 12th, 2005. This is after you had gotten the extra secret password. Everything. Password protected and everything else. They were still able to break into your account. Correct. This is, this is the part that really gets rather disgusting with this. Singular spokesman Mark Siegel admits the theft of cell phone records is a growing problem. I'd like to start specifically with the case that we've been dealing with, uh, which deals with this uh, pretexting. Somebody says there's someone else and is able to open an online account in this case uh, and access the phone records of the person they are impersonating. How does that happen? That was a very unfortunate incident, and we're certainly sorry that it happened, and we have worked aggressively with the customer to try to set it right, including suing the company that did it and the individual who hired the company to do it. It's plain old-fashioned deceit, and people who go after this data think of ways that they can coax information out of, say, a representative in a call center. They pretend to be the customer. They pretend to be somebody in a store trying to check on an account and to me, the most tasteless of all, they pretend to be an operator who is helping someone hard of hearing. The technical term for it is lying. You tend to not going to see a lot of customer complaints because customers often don't know that their information might have been stolen or compromised. Well, that's the scariest part, I guess. I mean, there are people out there right now who may be having their cell phone calls monitored by a third party that they're not aware of. That's a possibility, and it's a very easy thing to set up. You need a room, you need a few computers, uh, you need unscrupulous people, and you've seen the advertisements on the internet. We'll get you the information in an hour or two. It's 100 bucks, it's 200 bucks. Chances are Hewlett Packard paid a lot more than that when it hired private detectives to spy on its own board members and the press. Checking telephone records was a standard investigative technique at HP. In the highest profile case of pretexting yet, HP's then chairman, Patricia Dunn, allegedly authorized private investigators to obtain the home and cell phone records of other HP board members and journalists in an effort to root out leaks to the press. Dunn is among five people indicted on felony charges for violating California state privacy statutes. In January, California will join a small group of states in which pretexting is illegal. Currently, it is not a federal offense. If you went to my mailbox and stole my cell phone bill, that you know is a problem. Yet for you to call up Singular or Sprint or somebody else pretending to be me with my personal information, lying, setting up a fake account, getting my information that way, seems to be this gray area. The laws haven't caught up to the technology. And I find that very disturbing. Good afternoon. This hearing's going to examine ways to protect consumers' phone records from being fraudulently obtained and sold into the public domain. I'm glad to see that there's been some activity in Congress, both the Senate and the House, to start to introduce legislation that would criminalize this activity. But right now it isn't, and it should be. So you have a civil action against these people. Exactly. But the government 
can't get involved because it's not criminal. That's right. Adam Music's former partners declined our request for an interview. In a letter, they admit to hiring Gambino Information Services, but deny any knowledge of Gambino's actions, saying they were extremely disappointed that Gambino acted in what was apparently an unlawful manner. Gambino Information Services declined to comment. We've been looking for this guy for a couple of months now, and uh, so far, nothing. Ernie Rizzo, Chicago PI, was willing to talk about how he gets cell phone records for his clients. Rizzo has been snooping, first as a police detective, then on his own, for 45 years. What took a month of surveillance to figure out, not takes 10 minutes, everybody in the world is talking on their cell phones. So when you're spending weeks and weeks trying to pin somebody down, the phones tell you who he is in a second. When Rizzo first started getting phone records many years ago, it required some creativity on his part. I would call the phone companies and say, listen, I was out of town Friday, the babysitter made some calls, and I would kind of Mickey Mouse them into telling me what numbers were called, because the phone company has these records. But you got to be kind of clever. So what I would do is, first of all, I'd call between 12 and 1 o'clock in the afternoon, because that's what most full-time employees go to lunch. Those aren't the only tricks up Rizzo's sleeve. Not saying I did this, but I've heard detectives have done this. Okay, sure. You call the phone company, cellular or your home phone, and you say, I'm going to be out of town for a couple of months. I'm having all my mail sent to P.O. Box 1234. And then about five days later, once that goes on the records, you call for your phone records. And you say, please send me out a copy of my bill. I didn't get it this month. They will then send it to the post office box because they think it's you who's out of town wanting the records there. That was the old world. That's what I used to do when I was <laughs> years ago. Now Rizzo gets cell phone records the same way anyone can, by going on the internet and contacting a company that sells them. You still don't know how they actually give you the records. I have no you idea. You feel that they're accurate, though. Oh, there's no question. We discovered dozens of websites that were offering to sell phone records to any member of the public. And they were off on websites that said, see who your spouse is talking to, see who your employees are talking to. And so we wrote a complaint to the Federal Trade Commission and to the Federal Communications Commission, arguing that these companies should be shut down for selling personal information. The good news is, is that many of these websites have shut down, and it looks as though Congress might pass a law that would heighten penalties for getting phone records. However, um, we're seeing evidence that many of the people who sell these records are simply moving underground. Rizzo wouldn't reveal who provides him with his information. He says he is still having no trouble getting phone records for his clients. One of those clients, Naomi Garcia, suspected her fiancé was cheating on her. We wound up seeing that there was a, a number that kept calling, incoming and uh, going. Depending on the day, it could be, you know, 10, 12 times. I had seen, you know, I had seen the numbers. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really difficult, you know, and it wound up being his ex-girlfriend. Garcia's fiance denied he was cheating on her and said he was no longer talking to his ex. He wanted to reconcile, but Garcia remained skeptical. Hey. Have a seat. So a few months later, P.I. Rizzo gets more phone records, this time the ex-girlfriends. Well, I've got good news and maybe bad news. Out of 450, the last 450 phone calls she made, she did not call him. Okay. No phone calls at all. But I wouldn't jump to any conclusions based on this, and I'll tell you why. Once someone knows they're being watched and looked at, you know, their phone records are being checked, they use a little more caution. So for all we know, he went and spent $9 dollars got a second phone. For now, Garcia is done with cell phone records and the fiance. The fact that I would have to go to these measures to find out is just, you know, I don't want to base my, my marriage on that. You know, I want to base it on love and trust and honesty. You ever think twice about using your own phone in some ways? Sometimes, yeah. 
That's also true for Adam Music. He still uses a cell phone, but his days of carefree calls are over. It's just a very strange thing to think that anything you do is being watched by somebody to use against you. I mean, who would have ever thought that I'd be in a situation where I worry about who's calling me on my cell phone? When Big Brother Big Business continues, from the Mexican border to classrooms to motor vehicles and beyond, Biometrics technology is filling databases.